The art that Susan Fenton makes is classical and pure and lacks any unnecessary element. She takes the raw and specific stuff of our world and then structures her own more perfect version of reality. My name is Susan Fenton. It's always important, maybe of primary importance, that the work be beautiful. I have to share that. I feel, oh wow, look at that. And it's not something that I've stumbled upon, like a lot of photographers who walk around with a camera around their neck. It's something that I've manipulated and moved and placed. And when it works, I think, wow, look at that. So simple. Why does it work? I work slowly and very carefully and things have to be in order around me for me to be able to do it. If there's chaos, I would begin by organizing the chaos and then I would be able to work. Touring Susan's lovely and impeccably organized home, I saw just how deeply ingrained the spirit of order is within her. There's a mess, I have to clean it up. Is your husband... I don't have to clean it up right. I just have to get it out of my sight. Uh, well, no, is your husband as neat as you are? Yes, in some ways more so. Is there a family slob, perhaps your son? I don't know if I can answer that one. Both of my kids were family slobs until they got into their 20s. and Now they're inheriting... It's in the genes. My mother was the same way. My father was meticulous. Everything had to be done correctly. Susan is married to the wonderful abstract painter, Larry Spade. My husband was my teacher when I was getting my first master's degree. I had a profound respect for him as a teacher and as an artist, and I still do. I have learned so much from him and through him, even though he will scoff at this if he ever hears that I've said it and say that I am completely who I am and was completely who I am before I knew him. I don't think that's true. I think that there was a lot of give and take and bouncing off of each other. And I probably got the better part of it because once a teacher, always a teacher. Susan works in series and many of these overlap and go on indefinitely. She is great at still life and has made images of found objects from the Irish Sea. In another series, she placed things on pedestals in moonlight. She collects all sorts of stuff. Right side up, upside down. I just like everything about this guy. I have an assortment of these, all bought from a convent in Northern Liberties. Nuns wore when they used to shave their heads. Maybe they wore these at night to stay warm. How would you like to try one? I would love to try one on, Susan. Okay. The series that may have put Susan Starr on the art world map was of women posing in unusual headgear. I have loved these since I first saw them years ago. Susan shot these in black and white and then hand painted the colors for each. Yeah, Marshall's photo oils. I would probably do something back here or... Uh, that, there you go. There you go. Okay. For a hat like this on a guy, well, the mouth would have to be closed. I would probably have you sit for a few minutes until you forgot that you were posing, and then I would shoot it. I love those photos. Thank you. And now I get to be one. <laughs> <laughs> well, turn your head to the side. Oops. Okay. Down. Hey, that's a good one. Right there. Susan once told me that she would do landscapes if she could physically reshape the land to her own specifications. That's pretty intense, I thought out loud. 
<laughs> oh, don't turn me into a control freak. That's not what it is. But don't think anything is done carelessly. It's all very precise and controlled. That's just the only way I can work. Uh, it, it's the way I live.